morning dear friends and welcome to this holy mass of saint james the apostle feast day of saint james the apostle today we pray for all those who are persecuted for their faith pray for those who are persecuted for all the circumstances in their lives that they may feel the strength and support of our community and of all of god's people we also pray for those who have died for their faith, especially those who have died in my home country of Nigeria and around the world. We pray for religious freedoms and pray for the protection of these freedoms. We pray for young people, especially those who have no guidance and are almost getting lost in the wild wind of life. That the apostle james may find them and seek them and bring them to christ i also want to pray for all those who are sick pray especially for those whose condition is unknown or critical pray and ask that god may be with them to restore them and to heal them i'd like to pray for all of you and pray for your loved ones and your families ask god's intervention for everything that is happening now in your life Pray for our doctors and nurses who continue to sacrifice every day. Pray for their safety and for their families too. I pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. Pray for all those who have asked prayers at this time for their families, their families' health, their finances, their job situations, and their marriages. Pray and ask that God may be with you and that God may grant you graces you need please bring your intentions and let us pray together and offer them to god our loving god our opening hymn today will be amazing grace amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, gathered here to celebrate the feast of Saint James the Apostle, the brother of Saint John. Let us ask God's help, ask God's grace, and let us offer ourselves and bring whatever our concerns and our needs are at this time and place them on this altar and let us offer them together. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King. O oh God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty, ever living God, who consecrated the first fruits of the apostles by the blood of St. James. Grant, we pray, that your church may be strengthened by his confession of faith and constantly sustained by his protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the church in Corinth. Brothers and sisters, we hold these treasures in earthen vessels that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being driven up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believe, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore speak knowing that the one who, is, who has raised Jesus Christ will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, those who sow in tears will reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears will reap rejoicing. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, our tongue with rejoicing. Those who sow in tears will reap rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left, in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and my left, this is not mine to give, 
that it's for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to serve, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, as we come to the end of July, I'm sure there are many who are frustrated and rightly so. Many who are scared and have all the reasons to be. Many who are losing their faith in our systems, questioning the judgment of our leaders, questioning if they have an idea what to do as we see parts of the world open and others stay closed as we see borders closed and people locked down in their national boundaries not by choice but by force because of everything that is happening there is escalated anxiety in their hearts and minds and spirits and souls of a lot of us. There are people whose businesses depend solely on traveling and travelers and all of this is just stalled. So there is a lot of anxiety you know um, spread around everywhere and it is in the context of all of that Plus, parents who I'm sure rightly concerned as the government continues to push for the resumption of schools or teachers who are concerned about their health and the health of their families should they go back to school or other workers. So there is anxiety and we should be anxious because Anxiety often comes where we feel we don't have control over what is happening. And so we get anxious. The good news is there is one who has control. And he is the one who is speaking to us this morning. Paul says, We are afflicted in every way. I'm sure that's... That's an understatement at this time. Anyone can relate to those words because we have been afflicted. We, in our country alone, with over 145,000 people dead, with so many whose condition, though has improved, but may have to live with lingering health conditions, and with over 5 million others really sick, we have really been afflicted with our economies in tatters and our national debt blown far over anything anyone expected this time last year. And with more and more people not sure if they will be well again. We have been afflicted and afflicted on every side and in every way. And you, you think about the fact that some of us are without any crime committed, are in house arrest for counting maybe seven months now, or for say six months now, especially our seniors, for nothing. But because they just cannot be with their loved ones. And I worry for those who may not have much longer time here with us and may not be able to spend their last days with 
their children or their grandchildren. That must be very hard. So, so these are very difficult times. And Paul says to us, we are afflicted in every way, but not constrained. And that's the why the saying that social distancing doesn't mean emotional distancing. I do have um, a phrase I share with my soldiers uh, when they ask me, how are you doing today? And I tell them I'm socially distant but emotionally available. Because sure, we could be socially distant. That doesn't mean we are emotionally distant. We can still connect even from that distance. We can still relate even from that distance. We can still support each other even from that distance. I, I know for so many of us, physical distance means distance in every other sense. But you, you may want to appropriate those words. You can be physically distant, but always emotionally very available. So Paul tells us, we are afflicted in every way, but not constrained. That means, yeah, we are bombarded on every side, but we have not lost our right to choose how we want to deal with this. We have not lost our ability to comport ourselves in the most healthy ways possible, in the most manageable and, and, and responsible ways possible. So we still re reserve some right on how to comport ourselves in this space. It's all in your spirit and in your belief and in your system of faith that you can do this. But unless you realize that grace traverses boundaries and, 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 and spaces, you might feel that the fact that I cannot leave my house, therefore I'm stuck here. And of course, if whenever we feel stuck, that's when our stressors begin to increase emotionally, physically, and even spiritually. There are so many of us who have not been able to attend real mass. That means physically attend mass for a long time. And sure, we may be saying to ourselves, under these circumstances, you know what, I cannot fellowship. And that's true. But grace that God gives us at a, t at a moment like this, when he knows we are unable to do what we would like to do, is as powerful and as strong as any grace we will receive by physically being present at Mass at a normal time. Because just like the church said, God supplies graces at God's own time and how God knows best. So you may feel afflicted, just as we are all afflicted, but Paul wants us to recognize this. That we are not constrained. It says we may be perplexed, but not driven to despair. Now, this may not be true for everyone because there are so many who are constrained, who feel constrained right now. And there are so many who are perplexed, but also feel the sense of despair right now. And if you feel that your affliction has constrained you and that your perplexity is forcing you or driving you to despair and that the fact that you are persecuted by this virus and persecuted by everything else bombarded by everything else that somehow you have been abandoned and if that's how you feel then God is speaking to you today say we may be struck down but not destroyed yes sure our businesses and a, a lot of a lot in our lives is stalled right now knocked down, crushed in some ways. But from those crushed grains, God is going to spring something new. From those dust, God is going to spring something fresh. And indeed, from from you know that's from that whole setup of despair and loss, God is going to do something unimaginable and unbelievable. But we do have a role here. And our role here is what Paul tells us is to let to help us understand that it is all not over yet. We have not lost the battle yet. Yeah, we may have lost some pieces of this battle, but sure, when everything is over, we do have a super able God who can do all things and can fix every facet of our lives back again. So this brings us hope, especially at a moment like this. 
there are so many of us who like the mother of St. James are concerned about a lot of things. That's completely understandable. You see this mother, I'm sure she was a wonderful mother, like most of you are, a wonderful parent. I'm not sure how old she was at this time, but at this time life expectancy was also very short. So people might, might, might die in their 40s, early 40s or late 40s. And those who live to 50s and yeah, may have lived a long life. So we're not sure how old she was, but she was definitely concerned about something. She was worried. She was troubled by something, something that was not in her control. She was troubled about securing the future for her children. Apparently, they were not very wealthy because her husband was a fisherman. So they did not have a reserve out there or huge bank accounts out there or huge investments to pass over as inheritance to their two children. So she comes over to one who holds the future, one who has it all together, one who can guarantee the future of her children and she knows that. She knows she's unable to do that as much as she would like to do. So she is going to do what she feels is in her control. She is going to solicit with the one who has power and authority to do all things. So she comes to Jesus and says to Jesus and makes a request. Command, that means she wants a guarantee. She wants it um, made clearly to everyone else so that no one will be, nothing will be disputed. It says command, that means put it out there so that all of these other 10 will know that these two are guaranteed as far as you are concerned. So she says, command that these two sons of mine, one, they sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. So they may be like, uh, what you might call, maybe secretaries, all right? Maybe your financier and of something else somewhere there in the, in the kingdom of Christ. And the Lord said, you do not know what you're asking. So you could tell the desperation of this woman. She was so desperate that she didn't even take the time to think about what she was requesting. But she had to make a request. Jesus had to put her right. But that's not where I'm going to go to. I'm thinking about the concerns that parents and people everywhere are having right now. Right now, as you're listening to me, I'm sure you do have a concern that is not in your control. Because if it was in your control, you would just go ahead and do it. Maybe that concern is how your kids will be protected if they have to go back to school. Maybe that concern is how you yourself will be healthy as a teacher, or maybe someone with an immune, a compromised immune system, how you would fare if you went back to school. Maybe your concern is whether your business will still be here post coronavirus. Now, or if you may ever see your grandchildren again because of the way things are, in case something happens to you. Or you may ever see your parents again. Now, every one of us does have this concern. There are people whose parents are passed or whose loved ones are dead. They cannot even be there right now for their funerals or to even give them the last farewell. So people are all concerned, just like this woman. So we can identify with the mother of Zebedee's sons, having a concern that we don't have an answer for. And that we need someone to answer us. We need someone to do something about it. And maybe we're looking to our government. It doesn't seem that there's any source of hope from there. Or looking to our church, we cannot find. Or looking everywhere else, people we trusted, people we love, people who assured us they would give us whatever it, and there is no hope. Now, the fact that you cannot have an answer from all the people you trusted before now doesn't mean there is no answer. There is an answer. The mother of these two sons show us there is someone who knows it, who can even correct our request and change our request to fit 
what our anxieties are. And we can go to him. Just as this mother did. She went to him. She wasn't timid. Even though she wasn't sure what she was going to ask, she was just going to go there to him. And put it there before him. So I encourage you. It doesn't matter how you feel right now. Maybe you even feel like, well, he doesn't even listen to me. He doesn't even care about me. No. The Lord Jesus cares. He hears. He listens. And if you think you need even a faster way to get to him, you may also want to try his mother. Because that, that phone line is always open. That phone line is always open. There are no, well, he's so busy right now, this call is busy. There's something like that. That phone line is not open. You don't have to leave voice messages. It's a direct line. So we can go and find help and find something. There is help. We pray, dear friends, that on this feast day of St. James, we are, where we are reminded that sure, we have all of this happening. There is hope. There is hope in Christ Jesus. James understood it. His mother knew that too. And I hope we will come to believe as they did. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that God loves you very much. Let us say the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. We God and not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is still at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> James, the brother of John, was called from his fishing nets to follow Christ. Let us make our prayers assisted by the apostle who learned to serve others from his master. For a spirit of service and availability among the clergy, that we may always be available to those who need us and those who need the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For humble men and women who hold public office, that they may recognize their official position as a gift from God for the service of God's people and not use it to enrich or to seek other material benefits for themselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the growth of the church in our country here and around the world. That God may continue to inspire believers everywhere to witness to their love for God and their presence and effect in, in their lives and so win more souls for Christ and his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For courage to drink the cup of Christ's suffering, especially at this time where we are so prone to despair, that we may stand resolutely on the foundations of faith and never cave, trusting that God's grace will overwhelm our suffering and our struggles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For pilgrims and those who care for them, that they may be blessed by their service and their search and their seeking may be rewarded by God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today, and for those who have asked our prayers at this time, especially those whose family members may be sick or in critical care or condition, that God may help them find healing and recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who grieve their loss, that God may bring them comfort, grace, and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Let the Lord hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercies, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor and the children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this bed of tears. Turn that most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our own Jesus. O clement, so lovely, for sweet virgin. Let us pray. God our Father, may the prayers of St. James assist us as we make supplications to you. May the pilgrimage of this life be marked by our service to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Cleanse us, Lord, by the saving baptism of your Son's passion, so that on the feast of St. James, whom you willed to be the first among the apostles to drink the cup of Christ's chalice of suffering, we may offer a sacrifice pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostle, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in your name. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts, hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without ends we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. The Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Now, 
with the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. And grant us and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of our peace. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my beloved brothers and sisters. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be clean. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Prayer for spiritual communion. Most merciful God, we lift you up on heart, and we raise your name, that in this sacrament, all those who call upon that name and all those who desire this the union with this sac sacrament may rejoice to receive the full benefit of its effect. We ask, O oh God, that all those who are unable to participate physically may receive full grace for spiritual communion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Help us, O Lord, we pray, through the intercession of the blessed Apostle James, on whose feast day we have received with joy your holy gifts, 
we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to wish all of you a very happy feast day. If today is your feast day or your birthday or anniversaries, and I just want to wish you every good grace from on high. As always, remember, you remain the delight of God Almighty. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of St. James and our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing how great thou art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the walls thy hands have raised, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great.